Welcome, namaste. Thank you for being here. It's always a joy to share this practice that has brought so much goodness into my life, relaxation. So I'm always very grateful that I can share it with others. And just a little word, a reminder is that yin is really a practice of ease, of patience, of kindness. So if at any mo a moment during the practice, you catch yourself struggling, um, relax. Remember that there's nothing you have to do. If a pose doesn't feel good in your body, you can totally adapt it to make it feel good for you today. Um, if you don't already have a cushion or a pillow, I recommend grabbing one um, just before we begin so you can use it to make yourself comfortable. Um, if you have two, great. <laughs> you can have three if you like. And really, I invite you to give yourself permission to relax, to slow down, and to enjoy a moment of quiet, of peace. Welcome, Gimbert. And with that being said, we'll begin in a seated meditation. So if you feel that you're a little tight in your hips, you can sit on a cushion. And then you can rest your hands over your lap, lengthen your spine, close your eyes. And begin to deepen your breath. As you slow your breath down, become aware of your inner world. Notice how your body feels today. Notice any emotions present. Notice the thoughts that arise in your mind. And remember that these are simply visitors passing by. The physical sensations, the emotions and the thoughts are not permanent. Let them pass through you like clouds over a blue sky. Take a slow breath in through your nose. Fill up your lungs. And release the breath. Relax your shoulders. Relax your jaw. Relax the space in between your eyebrows. Take this moment to fully arrive in the now. The ever unfolding now. When it's good, we want to hold on to it and grasp it. And as soon as we do, it has vanished, dissolved in our hands. When it's not so good, we wish for it to pass a little faster. And eventually also it dissolves. So our practice teaches us to let everything be as it is. To trust. 
Take a slow inhale through your nose. Feel the air go deep into your lungs. And release the breath. And as you release the breath, visualize a wave washing over you, taking with it any tension in your body, in your heart, in your mind allowing you to become more present and allowing your week behind you, your day, to fade away into the background. And now mindfully bring your hands together in a prayer at your heart center. If you would like to set an intention for your practice today, now is a good time. Today is a, an auspicious day as we are approaching the full activation of Lionsgate portal. So the intention you set today will echo into the six months ahead of us, the year ahead of us some thought of this day tomorrow the 8th of August as the beginning of the year so we could say this today is in some ways the last day of a cycle ask yourself what energy you wish to cultivate for this cycle let it be simple let it uplift you, take a deep breath in. And a full breath out, release your hands back onto your lap. And we'll mindfully come to rest on our backs. So we're going to begin lying on our backs. You can use the pillow underneath your knees if you like. This can be really nice to support your lower back and then you can come all the way down, having your palms face the sky. For those of you who are new to yin, you might think, what is this yoga where we start in a nap? <laughs> The intention behind starting on our backs is to come into the parasympathetic nervous system to activate our rest and digest, to inform our body that we are safe to relax. For the next 60 or so minutes, there is nothing you need to resolve, nothing you need to fix. You can allow yourself to be held and enter deeper states of relaxation with every breath you release. Take a slow breath in through your nostrils, allow your belly to expand. And release the breath. Feel the connection between the parts of your body that connect to the ground beneath you. And see if you can release all of your weight into these contact points with the ground. Let there be a heaviness, an effortlessness in your body that very slowly begins to echo into your mind.
Our practice today is focusing on shining the light of consciousness from within as this spiritual sun, also known as the star Sirius or the goddess Goptet, according to the Egyptians, ancient Egypt knew a lot about astrology and they venerated this star as it brought more light. More light is more consciousness on planet Earth. And this light can remind us very simply that the same light that we see when we look at the skies is at the very core of our being, in the center of our being. There is, there is an undimmable light. And through our spiritual practice, we cultivate, we nourish this light. Take a full breath in, visualize the light shining at the center of your chest. And release the breath. And now very mindfully begin to wiggle your toes, your fingers. You can open and close your mouth. You can rotate your ankles and your wrists. And if it feels good to take a stretch, you can reach your arms behind you, point your toes. Open, expand, take space, deep breath in. And mindfully bring your knees into your chest taking your time, feel the connection between your sacrum and the ground. You can take little movements from side to side if you like. Open and close your knees if that feels good. And we'll mindfully come to rest on the right side in a fetal position, Ardha Shavasana. You can use your right arm as a pillow to rest on your right side. Breathe in. And breathe out. And gently bring yourself up to a seat. <sighs> and we'll begin in a child's pose so you can find your way to child's pose. I quite like using a pillow underneath my abdomen to feel really supported. If you want to try, you can try. And if you don't like it, you can take it out. Sometimes it feels nice to place a pillow underneath your chest and then you can either have one ear to the side or your forehead on the ground. The first few moments in the pose, if you feel like you need to readjust yourself, please do. 
And once you found your expression of the pose, find stillness. And we find stillness not as something outside of us that we can find in a shop and buy or we can find on the beach and take with us. Stillness is at the very core of each one of us. From stillness, movement is born. Just a sound is born from silence. And so the meditative practice is really a coming home to ourselves. Finding the way back to the very core of who we are. of what we are. Remember your breath, breathe in deeply. And breathe out slowly. Inhaling, feel your rib cage expand in every direction. Breathing out, feel yourself melt into the ground, releasing any effort in your shoulders, in your hands, in your face. And learning to value rest. This is something Western, particularly modern society, has somehow forgotten. That the yin and the yang are equally important, just as the divine feminine and the divine masculine complete each other. One is not better than the other. They have the same value. And as long as we don't understand this, we cannot find harmony in ourselves, in the world. But when we start practicing yin, sometimes we can feel a little bit restless, even if we've been practicing for years. And if we ever notice this, it's so important that we treat ourselves with compassion and patience. And remind ourselves that this is simply a practice. That we can't do it wrong. You're here, so you're already doing it just right. Take a full breath in here. Feel your belly soften and expand as the depths of your lungs fill up with fresh prana, new life force. And release the breath. You want to open your mouth to release a sigh. This can be really helpful in releasing tension. And when you're ready, gently lift yourself up into a tabletop position. Move as mindfully as you can. You can take time. And here we're going to take a minute for a lion's dance. So you can do anything your body wants to do. Let's see if you can do it 
slowly. So moving even slower than you're moving right now. If you're not sure what to do, you can try closing your eyes. And slowly find your way back to center. Tuck your toes under so your big toes are pressing into the ground. We're preparing for toe stretch pose. So the toes will come like this on the ground. And then for some of us, this may be really intense already. If you already feel like this is enough, you are very welcome to stay here. If you feel like you can walk your hands onto your legs, stay here. And if you come, you can come up and keep your breath slow and steady. You can stay up. traditional Chinese medicine and yogic philosophy with the philosophy of nadis teach us that we have meridian lines starting at our feet. So when we work with the feet, we're really working with the entire body. Remember, we don't want to put up with pain, but this can be quite an intense pose. If you need to come out, please do so. Try to do it slowly. One last cycle of breath here. Inhale. Exhale. And just as if you were in no rush to come out of the pose, begin to slide your hands forward, place them on the ground, and we're going to tap the tops of the feet on the ground. So you can gently tap the tops of your feet on the ground to release the toes. And now tuck your toes under once again and take a downward facing dog. We won't be here very long. If you need to bend one knee at a time, you can. If you need to wiggle your hips from side to side, you can. Let your head be heavy. Take a deep breath in. Open your mouth, relax your jaw, relax your throat, breathe out. and gently drop your knees back onto the ground. And we're going to take a slightly different pose. The difference is that now the tops of the feet will be on the ground. This is great for our knee joint health. This pose is known as hero pose or vrishasana. So the knees and the heels will be parallel. The tops of the feet are now on the ground. And if you feel like this is too much for you, you're very welcome to use a folded pillow and to sit on it. This might make this more comfortable for you. If you can do it without the pillow and it feels okay in your body, 
For some of you, your glutes might touch the ground. Don't force yourself down. We'll stay here for a moment. Once you've found the position, so the knees and the, and the heels, the ankles are at the same distance. So we're not like in a child's pose creating a V, but really parallel legs. And so the compression of the knee joint stimulates the secretion of the fluids that enable our joints to be healthy. See if you can relax in the pose by breathing a little bit slower. If you would like to increase the stretch, you can bring your hands behind you. So my legs are still exactly the same. For some of you, staying upright will be enough. For some of you, bringing the hands back will feel okay, as long as there is no pain in the knee. It might feel uncomfortable in the quadriceps and the ankles, as this is quite a deep stretch already. If you feel like it, you want to go deeper, you can begin by bending your elbows. You don't need to go all the way to the ground or perhaps you bring your arms further back. Try not to force yourself into a pose or to rush down to the ground. If you are sitting on a pillow, perhaps you remove the pillow and you rest upright in hero pose. And if, only if this feels good in your body and you can keep your legs on the ground, if the knees lift, I will invite you not to go any deeper. Some of you may want to bring your elbows to the ground and to drop your head back. Notice if your breath has changed at all. If your breath has changed, see if you can deepen it once again for the last few moments here. Can you keep an attitude of relaxation in your body and in your mind? Low breath in through your nose. Exhale completely. And just as slowly as you came down, begin to make your way back up. And we will come out of the pose and we're going to come to rest on our front. So you have time, please don't rush this. Let's come all the way onto your front. Once you are resting on your front, if you feel any discomfort in your lower back, you can bring your big toes together and let your heels come away from one another, or you can have your legs out wider. You can have your forehead resting over your hands in front of you, or you can have your arms extended towards your feet and one ear on the ground. Take a deep breath in through your nose, feel your abdomen 
expand into the ground. And release the breath completely. So I chose this theme of shining the light of consciousness from within. Because this is really the only way we can find true peace is when we remember that the light of consciousness is what animates each one of us. As I said earlier on, it is not something outside of us. We can see it outside of us. We see it in one another. We see it in plants. But when we think that it's something separate from us, this is part of Maya, the illusion. We all come to Earth School to learn and to remember that we are this very light. We have the freedom of choosing where we invest our energy. How we choose to live our lives. And for there to be light, there must be darkness. But we always have a choice when we remember that the very core of our existence is pure consciousness. There is an ease in this decision-making that we are exposed to in every moment. In every moment we are making decisions, whether we do it consciously or not. We get to decide if we want to what we think about what we focus on. Take a deep breath in, send the breath to the very depths of your being, fill up and release the breath, let it all go. And we are gently going to move into a half frog pose. I really love this pose. It's a very gentle uh, hip opening and chest opening. I will explain the pose and then I will demonstrate it in case you didn't understand it. So you'll bend your right knee out and your right elbow out and you can keep your left elbow bent. So. I will show. I have my left elbow bent on the ground and I will rest my left ear on the ground and I have my right elbow and my right knee bent on the ground as if I was hugging the ground. If you feel like you need some support for your knee, if the ground is a little hard, you can place the pillow underneath your right leg. <clears throat> And so as always, as you come into the pose, allow yourself to adjust. If you're not sure if you're quite in the best expression of this pose for you, you can wiggle yourself a little. And then come back to stillness.
physical stillness can really help us become aware, more aware of ourselves. I always smile, I've said this many times before, but when people tell me that they don't like meditation because it makes them think more. It's not that meditation makes us think more, it's that it makes us aware of how much we are thinking. <laughs> and this is not a bad thing when we become aware of how much we think, what we think about, then we have the power of choice. We can decide, I want to feed these thoughts or not. Remember, you are not your thoughts. You are the thinker. Thinking that we are our thoughts, as many of us tend to believe, is like thinking that we are the car instead of the driver, or the horse instead of the jockey, which gives us very little freedom to choose. When we practice deep meditation regularly, yin is a deep meditation practice, we develop the skill of self-awareness. I catch myself sometimes thinking things and I wonder, where did this thought come from? I don't want to continue to think this, so I make a choice, I focus on something else. Let the thought pass rather than following it through. If it's a fear-based thought or a judgment of myself or someone else, I forgive myself because I am learning, I am growing. And I make a different choice. Take a deep inhale. Send a breath to your lower back, to your chest. Open your mouth. Relax your jaw. Let the breath come out gently. And notice if there's any tension in your body, if you're holding anywhere in your body. And if so, you can directly communicate with this part of your body and ask, please relax. Please relax. Notice if you feel any difference. You are safe to relax. And now very slowly make your way out of the pose and come to rest either on your front or on your back before we take the same pose on the other side. We will take a pause in between the two and you decide whether you do this on your back or on your front. Breathe in deeply. Exhale. 
and breathe out softly. With every breath we take in, we nurture this inner light of consciousness within. And with every breath out, we can release anything that is not that. Allowing ourselves to let go of old ways of being as we go through this Lionsgate portal. This new year, according to certain ancient civilizations invites us to be reborn, to start again. And to start again, we must let go of the old, old ways of thinking, old ways of being. If you were on your back, I invite you to come back onto your front. And we're going to take half frog Ardha Makrasana on the left. So you'll bend your left knee out and your left elbow out. If you need to use a pillow underneath your knee, you can. <laughs> take your time to enter the pose. And then find your surrender. Wow. When we enter deep states of meditation, our brain starts emitting different waves to when we are active or concentrating. These brain waves are known as alpha brain waves. They are the lowest brain waves before sleep. So we are still conscious. In deep sleep, we emit theta brain waves. In yin and meditation, we can come to this space, this place of deep calm. And if deep calm is not what you are experiencing today in this moment, be gentle with yourself. We access these deeper states of relaxation, these different states of consciousness by trying, by practicing. Sometimes it is easeful, and sometimes it is not. By practicing relaxing our body, we encourage our mind to do the same. Even if it's not instant, even if it still feels like the mind is busy, eventually the pace of the thought slows down. There is a shift in the quality of the thoughts. And the space between the thoughts begins to lengthen. It's 
Sometimes we may even perceive ourselves as this light of consciousness that we are. Take a deep breath in through your nose, fill up. And let it all go. And just as slowly as you came into the pose, come to rest, either on your front or on your back. Take your time. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Nothing to do. Nowhere else to be. But here, now. If you are on your front, please come onto your back, moving mindfully. If you are on your back, stay on your back. And enjoy a moment resting on your back. If you're transitioning from your front to your back, you can come gently on your back and enjoy the sensation of opening, of expansion in your body. Yin is a little bit like a self-massage. Wow. <sighs> And bring your knees into your chest. And we're going to take a reclined twist. I quite like having a pillow between my thighs. So if you want to try that, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And then once you've got your knees in your chest, I'm going to do it with the pillow so you can see. You can bring your arms into a cactus shape so both elbows are bent and the arms come out to the sides like this. And then I will drop my knees over to the right and I will keep my arms as they are and I will look towards my left arm. Eventually I will close my eyes so I can completely relax but my neck will stay like this. If you feel inspired to after the practice or in the evening today or tomorrow, you can take some time to journal about your intentions for this new cycle. In ancient Egypt, as I said, this was seen as the beginning of the year because the Nile would return and allow for the farming season to begin again. And this solar spiritual sun 
the return of Sirius, known as the goddess Sotbet, was a celebration, an opportunity to celebrate our own death and rebirth. So in the next 24 hours, we can all contemplate what parts of ourselves need to die so other parts can be born. Breathe in fully. And breathe out softly. In these simple twists, we really support our digestive system and the functioning of the kidneys, the liver, by applying a gentle compression in the pose and then releasing will stimulate the flow of energy of chi or prana in the body. Although of course in the fast paced world we live in holding a pose for three to five minutes sometimes can feel like eternity. And sometimes this eternity feels so good like a pause in time. Going back to our natural rhythm, humans were never meant to go so fast. Take a final cycle of breath in this pose, breathe in. And breathe out. And mindfully bring yourself back to center. And in your own time, you can transition over to the opposite side. So either with the pillow between your thighs or not and then dropping your knees over to the left as your right arm extends to the right and you allow your nose to drop towards your armpit or towards your elbow. Inhale fully and exhale softly. The more we release tension in our body, the freer we become physically, but also mentally as the physical tension is simply an echo of our mental tension. Again, not something to feel bad about, something to learn about, to be aware of. 
how our mind and our body and our spirit coexist and influence, impact one another. And slowly find your way back to center. Inhale, deep breath in through the nose, fill up your lungs. And open your mouth to release the breath. For the last pose before the final relaxation, I want to invite you to choose the pose that you want to take right now. If you want to take Viparita Karani, you can extend your legs to the sky and rest with your legs up. If you want to take a supported fish or a supported bridge, this is a great, these are great options. Maybe you take a happy baby. And if you're already ready for Shavasana, perhaps you come into your final rest. You can also take Supta Bada Konasana by joining the soles of your feet and letting your knees come down towards the ground. Remembering that we are our number one guide always. We all need guidance at times, but we are our own best guide. No one knows us like we do. No one knows what's best for us as much as we do. And so when you're ready, you can begin to come out of your choice of pose and come to rest on your back. This will be our final relaxation. If you have pillows nearby, I quite like having them underneath my knees. If you have a blanket, you can cover yourself. You can also place something over your eyes. So you can be in the dark. Take your time to set yourself up for your deep rest. Shavasana. Place your hands wherever you feel most nurtured. So maybe you place your hands on the ground or perhaps you rest them over your womb space, over your belly. You can also place a pillow over your belly. Take your deepest breath of the day, of the week. Ah. 
and let it all go. Allow the light of your own consciousness shine through you. Give yourself permission to experience the pure consciousness that you are. Atman. Please continue to rest as I read the first passage I've read from The Unknown She, The Eight Faces of an Emerging Consciousness, a book recommended by one of my beloved teachers, Antoinette. Initiation into Heartbreak. When one takes a transcendent stance and limits life and the world as an illusion, it becomes difficult to engage in the problems of the world and to work to resolve these problems. Passionate engagement in life includes the willingness to experience deeply the needs of the world and the suffering within life. When I think of somebody who came into the complete consciousness I'm trying to describe, I think of St. Francis, Andrew tells me. And I think of a particular detail. When he was dying, it was spring, and he spent a lot of his last energy in this world going out from his deathbed into the little paths around Tuscany, picking the little slugs up from the paths to save their lives. Each of these little slugs kindled in his heart infinite love. Don't tell me that he thinks of reality as an illusion. Because he experienced the full mystical initiation, he came to understand that the illusory nature of the world is actually an element of one's own senses of the limitations of one's senses before they are transformed. He saw that one's senses create the illusion of separation, the illusion that the forms of the world are not real. And he saw that underneath and in all of these forms is light. This whole creation is in fact a creation of the dance of different colored lights that emanate from the one white light.
Take a full breath in through your nose. And release the breath out. With the remembrance that we are all emanating the same white light. Begin to move your body. Taking any movements that feel good right now. You can give yourself a hug if that feels nice and comforting. You can rock yourself from side to side. And when you're ready, you can come onto your left side in a fetal position. Mindfully bring yourself up to a seat. And when you're ready, you can join your hands at your heart center one last time. We'll close the practice chanting the sacred mantra Om as a prayer for love and peace for this new cycle. So that the light of Sirius reminds us of the light that we are. Take a deep breath in. Um. Lift your prayer to the space in between your eyebrows. Loka samasta. Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free from suffering, and may all our thoughts, our words, and all our actions contribute to the happiness and freedom of all beings, wherever they may be. Namaste. Thank you all so much for your practice. So nice to be with you all. I hope you feel relaxed and that you gain something from the practice. Uh, I've written a blog article that talks a little bit more in depth about what Lionsgate Portal means and what it represents. So I'll share that in case you're interested. And as always, the class is donation-based and I'm really grateful for anything you can donate. So thank you again for being here and happy Lionsgate portal to everyone. <laughs>